What's up? It's Ben from WAPREP, and in this video, we are remaking one of the most popular videos I've ever made, and that's how to care for your hands when you're doing CrossFit. So if you're trying to prevent your hands from ripping, you're trying to prevent those annoying blisters and calluses, whether it's on your palms or on your thumbs, this is the video for you. And then we're also going to add a couple updates where what happens when you do tear? This is a new and improved version of hand care for CrossFit because I've actually changed a couple of my opinions and now my hand care is even better than ever. And lucky for you, I actually did semi-purposefully get a callus and rip it so that I can demonstrate to you how we're gonna practice healing that in this video. So if this is of any interest to you, stick around because we're gonna go through two parts. Part one will be all about how to prevent yourself from ripping. And then part two is what happens when you do rip, what should you do? So stick around, this video is gonna be great. And if you stay to the end of this video, I'll tell you where you can get a bunch of free training material from the WAD Prep team to help you take your skills to the next level. Let's start with part one of this video. The best thing for you is to not rip. If you don't wanna to have to do a bunch of hand care, the best thing for you to do is don't get blisters and don't rip your hands. That's what the next couple points are gonna be about. If you remember in the first video that I released, I talked about not being a very big fan of gymnastic grips. I didn't really find one that I liked. I promoted victory grips at the time, which is still a really great solution, but I've learned a few things since that fateful day a few years ago when I recorded that video, and now I am a huge fan of grips for specific movements like toes to bar, any kind of pull-ups, uh, or any sort of bar work where you're prone to tearing your hands. I still don't use grips for things like bar muscle-ups and ring muscle-ups, but I might be rounding a corner, and I'll show you why. So for a lot of you, when you have grips, uh, most of us, or a lot of people that I know, have traditional grips like this, Wad Nation grip, that have finger holes. The wrong way, I think, to use them is to use them as they're designed, which is just put your finger in it, and then when you jump up and grab the bar, you just grab the bar. So all that's happening is you have a thick bar, that's what my finger is demonstrating, you have a bar, and then the leather, and then your skin. And what happens is, especially as you start doing a lot of reps, you can still tear. You'll still rip your calluses, you'll still rip your palm. All you're doing is adding a small protective layer, and frankly, I'm not the biggest fan because I think it makes it harder to grip the bar, adding a slippery material or a thicker material in between your hands and the bar. So that's why for the longest time, I was like, just go bare skin, it's better. However, nowadays, I am suggesting something that I think is even better for protecting your hands, and that's let the grip do the work. And here's what I mean by that. If you watching the CrossFit Games in 2021, you notice that almost every single athlete had grips like this, but instead of putting their fingers in the holes or doing what Victory Grip recommends, which is kind of putting your fingers in the holes and then allowing the, the bar to fold and you kind of create a flap that you grab onto, that works really well, but even better is just take your hands, take your fingers out of the grip or like this Element 26 grips, uh, it kind of naturally does it really easily, even if you do put your fingertips in the holes. Regardless, just take your grips and throw them over the bar. What happens is that when the grip is thrown over the bar, it functions similar to a weightlifting strap. If you've ever used weightlifting straps, you know that it makes grabbing onto the bar way easier. Well, in this case, this is the same thing. What's happening is you're taking the grip and you're folding it over the bar and then pinching it down with your fingertips. What happens is the weight of your body or the weight of your grip no longer is all about your hands, which smokes your forearms and your grip and causes lots of tearing because there's so much pressure on these calluses. What happens is that when you throw your grip over the bar without your fingers in the holes, it's basically gonna feel like this. If I grab this grip and pull as hard as I can, all of the weight of that pull is distributed on the wrist. So it's as if someone's coming and grabbing your wrist and pulling it, there's all that tension on your wrist. And same thing with these grips. All of this tension, which is why they have these big neoprene pads right here to absorb it, all of this tension is in my wrist and in this joint right here. It's not on my hands and not on my palms, which when we have less pressure on our palms and our calluses, guess what? Less ripping. I'm telling you folks, <laughs> when you use grips like this, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, why have I never done this before? So again, don't put your fingers in the holes. Allow the grips to fold completely over the bar. And if you have a grip like these Element 26 ones, I'm telling you, you can hold on to that bar all day long when compared to just gripping with your raw hands. Because again, what happens is, first of all, this grip actually kind of sticks to the bar. It's like really, really durable and really sticky. All of the pressure of the weight of the grip gets distributed on your wrist. Less grip fatigue, less prone to tear. Even if you do have calluses, they're just gonna get less pressure on them, which thus creates less ripping. So for most movements that involve a bar, 
where we're doing pull-ups, toes to bar, things like that, I highly suggest using some form of grip. If you want the grips that I'm demonstrating here, these Wad Nation one, ones work. I just recommend getting a size up. So these are mediums. For me, I would recommend a, a large or an XL. These are the large version of the Element 26, which are, I think, indestructible. Like these are quickly turning into my favorite grips in the entire world because of the actual stickiness and the neoprene that kind of protects your wrist from all that pressure. Regardless of which one you choose from, I'm gonna include all the links to the ones that I suggest in the, in the description below and in the top comment so that you can grab some for yourself. Things like Bear Complex, Victory Grips, there's a lot of other grips in the market and they do a fine job. You don't have to stick with one specific brand, you just need to make sure you're using it properly. And again, that means taking your fingers out of the holes. So now that we've covered and we've kind of debunked my last video where I said, I don't use grips, now I do and they work really well. Now let's move on to the next step which is taping your thumbs. So if you're someone that's done high volume pull-ups, bar muscle-ups, toes to bar, or obviously used a barbell for snatches and cleans and even deadlifts, you know how important the hook grip can be. And if you don't use the hook grip, I'm telling you, you are wasting a lot of energy and a lot of grip fatigue. Use the hook grip, you'll be better for it when you're doing barbell movements. I don't really recommend a hook grip per se when we're doing gymnastic movements, but I do recommend, as you can see here, wrapping your thumb even with grips, I recommend wrapping your thumb around the bar. When you're in this position though, it's very easy to actually get some wear and tear on your thumbs. I've seen people actually rip their thumbs doing pull-ups with no barbell at all, just the actual pull-up bar. So here's what you need. Uh, there's a lot of different companies that have these. Uh, Element 26, uh, who are, are my good buddies, and then Wad Nation, who's also my good buddies, happen to make, I think, some of the best tape out there. Goat Tape is another brand. Any sort of stretchy, flexible tape that has adhesive on it. Jay Bird, I think, is one of the originals. All you need to do to wrap your thumbs properly, either for the hook grip, or I still do it for high volume pull-ups and bar muscle-ups, is take this stretchy adhesive tape, put it on your thumb like this, and then wrap, I like to wrap internally, all the way around the thumb, and I get that, that end of the thumb twice, and then rip. And then here, this flexible tape allows you to actually grip for the hook grip quite easily. And if, what it does is it prevents any rubbing that might occur when you're doing those high volume pull-ups or gripping the barbell, okay? So I always recommend using some sort of stretchy adhesive flex tape. You can find them on Amazon. Again, Element 26 and Wad Nation, I will have linked below uh, for your leisure. And this will prevent you from ripping on those barbell hook grip movements or gymnastic movements on the pull-up bar. For the third part of don't rip, this is the most important section, obviously, is preventing rips. I really, really recommend shaving your calluses. One of the problems that we see with a lot of CrossFitters, and you actually see here that I, I've let a few calluses develop, is we get these big bumps of dead, dry skin, and they'll be on our finger pads, they'll be right here above our palm, and what happens is that this turns into something like this, where you can actually see, I did rip this the other day uh, on a barbell movement, believe it or not, where the barbell just kind of ripped off my callus. And the reason I got it is because I haven't been taking care of my hands in the way that I'm gonna show you. But when I'm staying on top of it, this really does work. The first thing that I wanna tell you about to eliminate these calluses is to shave them. I'm not gonna show you right now because I already did it on a YouTube video. So again, that, that other video, that hand care for CrossFit video that's been so popular and a lot of athletes have told me has transformed their hands and prevented them from tearing, go watch that and you'll see me actually shave my calluses and demonstrate everything on video. However, I wanna come back with a couple, maybe even simpler ways to do it. Originally, I didn't really like files. I didn't like, I didn't think filing down my calluses was working that well at all. So that's why, generally speaking, uh, and if I was still competing a lot, I probably would still take an actual razor, a callus shaver, and shave my calluses. But the issue with that is sometimes you miss and sometimes you can nick yourself and it's, it's a little dangerous and some people are freaked out by the razor blades and that's okay. So the next step, uh, this is a company that actually reached out to me well over a year ago and I just now started using it so I gotta give them a shout out. Uh, it's just called Sandbar. Literally all it is is they took a, basically a pull up bar, piece of pipe, this is about the same thickness of, as a pull up bar, and then they put sandpaper around it. And all you do is you grab the bar like you would a pull up bar and then rotate the sandbar or rotate the opposite direction. So I go both directions. And what happens is all of the hot spots and pressure points of gripping the bar, like you would on an actual pull-up bar, those hot spots and pressure points that develop those calluses, you actively shave them off. So I'll, I'll, what I do is I, I wash my hands in nice warm soapy water to get them nice and pliable, which is really important. You don't wanna do this with dry, cracky hands. Wash my hands and then I will grab this bar and just go back and forth a bunch of times. And then I will sit here and individually shave them down. What happens is 
the callus might not be eliminated entirely, like in the case of shaving, but it's a really easy, very, very safe, injury-free way to get rid of the calluses. And I've done this uh, actually before a couple open workouts this year. And then obviously, if you have access to it, that callus shaver will work. But the bottom line, again, to review part one, is to not rip. The three ways that you can prevent yourself from ripping is number one, make sure that you know how to use your gymnastic grips properly for gymnastic movements. Number two, make sure that you tape your thumbs for both gymnastic movements and then obviously barbell movements where we're using the hook grip. And then number three, make sure to get rid of those calluses by washing your hands with nice warm soapy water, get them nice and clean, and then either shave the calluses off or rub them off with some sort of sandpaper or in this case, the sandbar, which again, I will have linked below along with the callus shaver that I use linked below. And then last but not least for this part, before we move on to the next part, is it actually really helps prior to your workouts. This is something that I learned from Olympic weightlifters is wash your hands with warm soapy water so that your skin is soft and pliable prior to doing your workout. After you wash them, of course you can chalk them up to make them not wet, but having soft pliable skin is better for promoting durable skin compared to dry, tough skin that can rip really bad. So keep that in mind before your next workout and hopefully these three slash four tips will help you prevent ripping. Now let's move on to part two. What do you do when you rip your hands? It's inevitable. If you're someone who competes at a high level or if you're someone who does Murph ever or someone who pushes it a little bit farther on that bar, you're gonna rip your hands at some point. It happens to all of us. If you can't follow part one of this video or, or something didn't quite line up and you do eventually rip, it's important that we heal quickly and then allow ourselves to get back to the gym. Uh, and we're gonna talk about a few different things that I've learned to help myself heal and repair. So when I had this callus rip off, what I did was I actually applied, normally I would just, in the past I've just recommended super glue, like literally like Gorilla Glue from the store. But what's cool is that uh, my friends at Element 26 have actually developed a rip repair kit. And there's a few other skincare companies in the functional fitness CrossFit space that can help you repair ripped skin. Literally all you do here is it's similar to a super glue. You take a little applicator and then all I'm doing is taking it and applying it to my clean skin. What it does is like in 60-ish seconds, this thin layer of, you know, what I used to use with super glue, which would burn like crazy, this isn't burning at all. What happens is this is gonna dry and it actually creates like a protective layer, almost like a fresh layer of skin without the excruciating burning pain that new skin and, and super glue has. This is great for preventing tears. Like if, if you saw you had a callus that was like in the middle of the day, you're like, oh no, this thing's getting sensitive, it might tear. You could literally take it and apply this on top of it, which can help prevent calluses. Or where I really use this, this rip repair is if I do have a rip. If I have a flap of skin or I, you know, in this case, the flap of skin came off completely, you remove all the excess flaps, you expose that raw skin, and then you cover it with this protective layer which is impermeable to sweat and chalk and stuff like that. So in theory, you could keep working out and this is gonna protect that skin layer. Another thing that you can do beyond just super gluing is uh, also the people at Sandbar. Uh, I've been using this for a couple months now. Again, it took me a while to actually open the package and use it, but this is just like, it's almost like a chapstick. It's a, it's a salve. Basically, it helps moisturize at the point of contact. So I would take this salve, put it on the calluses and what's gonna happen is it's gonna soften the skin and it also serves as a bit of an antibacterial, so like anti-infection cream. So obviously if you have exposed skin, it's really important that we wash our hands with warm soapy water, get rid of any sort of dirt or grime or, or infections that could be lur you know, lurking around in there. And then applying something like this rip, re rip repair super glue essentially, or putting some sort of salve on it to make sure that you keep the skin soft and pliable. The last thing we wanna do, if we're healing this callus, like this callus specifically over the next few days, I'm gonna make sure that I keep it moisturized by using a combination of that super glue before I work out. And then at night, I'll probably be applying a lot of this, this salve to keep it nice and moisturized because that's gonna help promote healing. If you let your skin dry out completely, like it's really easy for me to do here in Colorado, then naturally that skin will crack and, and tear. And there's been times where I've had a little, little tear and then every time I touch a barbell or touch a pull-up bar, boom, it rips again. And the way to prevent that is to make sure that the skin is soft and pliable, put a bit of that super glue over top of it, and that's really gonna help promote healing. And then my last tip, and this is to make sure that you don't go days and days without showering. I am not gonna lie, there have been times in the past in my really competitive days where I had four or five tears per hand because of epic open workouts or epic regionals workouts that I had to do. 
and it would, I would literally have to go in the shower and like keep my hands out of the water because they were burning so much. If you've ever torn really deeply and then had soap and water hit it, you know how painful it can be. Here's a pro tip. Number one, wear latex gloves in the shower. If you have bad tears and you can't expose them to much water, or in my case, like I can't touch it to my head because these prickly hairs will pierce it and it just feels terrible, just wear some gloves. Like I actually have uh, black latex gloves for barbecuing and I will put those on in a pinch. And what that does is that just adds a little protective layer, keeps your skin dry and prevents you from actually like getting that burning soap in the skin. Another thing that you can do is take a big old slab of Vaseline, which is waterproof, put it over the callus, and then you can shower and you know rub all your bits and stuff like that to make sure that you're not the person that I was at one point that skipped showering for a couple days just because we couldn't bear having our hands burning in the shower, being exposed to that hot water and soap. So if you do tear, I hope that these tips help. Obviously refer to part one of this video if you wanna make sure that you never tear again and be sure to watch my older video of a much younger, less handsome version of myself and watch all the tips that I gave back in the day that worked for a really long time, which included callus shaving and a couple techniques to use the grip. I hope that this video was helpful. Again, all the resources to go along with this will be linked up below. Maybe some discounts on some of these products or at least direct links to some of the products that I actually do use. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Tell me a story of how you ripped once. Everyone's got a story. What was the workout? Where did you rip? And what are you gonna do now to prevent that from happening again based on what you learned in this video or the other video? I hope that this helped you. And last but not least, if you want more free training, like all these tips that I'm giving you for free here on YouTube and Facebook, then go to wadprep.com. On wadprep.com, the main page, we have links to tons and tons of free training material that's gonna help you take your training to the next level. Go check that out, and then I will see you in the next video.